Welcome back to another Toyota video here at my channel. Today's video, I want to go ahead and showcase my 1993 Toyota pickup. We'll go ahead and do a full tour. We've done a few tours in the past already during the summertime, but I want to go ahead and just do another full tour. You never know, man. In the next couple years, this truck might be gone. It might be sold. Something might happen to it. So the only thing we have left is these videos we can go back and look at. So that's one of the reasons why I love making videos. You know, I can always go back and watch my videos. Um, the other day, I went back and watched my video of the Green Beast when I did a walk around of it. And man, I sure missed that truck. So for all you folks that are new to the channel, this is my main truck here. This is my 1993 Toyota pickup um, V6 SR5. And um, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about what I've done to it. But first, let me just go ahead and give you guys a quick walk around. Just showcasing you guys the vehicle. We'll go ahead and talk about suspensions, tires, and modifications, stuff like that. <coughs> I bought this truck here um, last June, last June after I rolled my second gen 4Runner and it was completely stock, stock tire, stock lift, or no lift, um, it had a really nice rear stock bumper, nice and chrome, hasn't been rusted out or anything like that, but I sold that and got rid of that. And. Uh, didn't have this toolbox I love the toolbox setup if you guys remember a couple of months ago I had a camper setup and the camper is nice too you know it's nice to have all your stuff nice and dry but I like having a truck because I can throw stuff in and out much more easier and then the toolbox can keep all my essential stuff secure so this is the green truck it's not like a real green it's more like a forest green they call it some days it looks like it's gray nighttime it looks like it's gray so i like it it's a nice forest green <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about some of the modification that i've done to this beautiful truck 93 sr5 um, we've done a suspension lift so 1.5 inch ball joint spacer up front i did not torque uh, no cranking on the torsion bar just the regular ball joint spacers install and then on the rear we had a AAL whenever you guys hear AAL it stands for add a leaf <laughs> so for the rear we added a extra leaf to give it a slight lift and then on the tires we are running 33 by 10 and a half 15 inch BFG KO2 and uh, with these tire size, there's absolutely no rubbing, no need to cut, and you can also run these tires even if you don't have the lift that I have. You can run it on a stock suspension. <laughs> the only time you'll rub is when you do like a full flex off-roading, but for most of the time, you'll be fine. So the only reason why I did the lift um, was because it was free. It came off Eric's truck when he uh, had it, and he did a solid axle swap. So the only reason why I did it because he gave it to me for free, so shout out to Eric for that. And uh, so yeah, you don't have to run the tires. I also did the new headlights. These are the new LED headlights. Get them on Amazon, really good. And then 40 inch, this is a 32 inch, I believe. I forgot, I don't know. 32 inch, 32 or 36, 36 inch, I believe. 36 inch LED bar. I made a full separate video um, about the LED bar so you guys can check that out. Just got done doing a timing belt replacement. Did that last week. So new timing belt, uh, new water pump, new everything. I also replaced my CV axle this winter after they ripped through one of the Connect Glacier runs. So new CVs, and I'm running all AutoZone CV axle, AutoZone ball joint spacers, no AutoZone uh, ball joints, and AutoZone tie rods and tie rod ends. They have lifetime warranty on that, so if they break. I just take them in and get it swap out really nice and easy. Love working with those guys. It didn't have manual hubs. When I bought the truck, I knew for sure that I want these manual hubs. So I got some install. So I got some manual hubs installed in them. It helps with your CVs when you're not in, when you're just driving in town. You can just turn them off and uh, less wear and tear on your CVs axle. These are trail gear sliders, they're weld on. You gotta weld them to the frame. I also got the windows tinted. I forgot how dark they were, but they're pretty dark and they're, uh, they serve really good privacy. If somebody was to be sitting in there right now, 
you can't really tell who they are or, or you can't really tell who they are you can just see a you can see a figure a head figure but that's about it and then these are also really nice these are the windshield these are your window guard ring guard they call it and these are made by AVS I got these on Amazon and these are really nice they just kind of you just peel them off and it's like 3m it's just it's all held by adhesive the whole purpose of this is that when it's raining outside you can still roll down your window you can prop your window down and this prevents any rain getting inside of you I highly recommend people get that install it's really nice they're really affordable too I think I paid less than a hundred bucks on them this is a trail gear bolt on bumper as well it bolts onto the factory bolts for your trailer hitch and stuff like that um, for extra insurance I went ahead and had them welded onto on the uh, bumper you can see the two bolts so it's two bolts on each side and then I had a I had Scott out in Wasilla. I had him put a few wheels on them, just one right there and then one on the other side as well. One right there and one right there. And what that is is just to uh, just for extra insurance, you know, prevent anybody from stealing it, and also just to prevent it in case the bolts get loose and it starts to get wobbling. As far as the bottom of the truck here, I went ahead and removed the tire carrier. I don't like having the tire carrier in here. It's really annoying and uh, usually it doesn't fit anyways. So I got all that removed. I also have the rear differential breather. So this is the rear differential breather. The hose goes all the way up and then goes to the, it comes up to the tail light, it comes up to the driver tail light. And then I also got the Flowmaster. This is a Flowmaster muffler. I had them install that too. I, uh, this one here I got for free. And then I installed it on my second gen 4Runner. And then when I crashed that one, I cut this one off of the 4Runner. And I kept it for this truck here. So this truck will need exhaust work soon. The tailpipe is starting to rust right here. The tailpipe is starting to rust right there. I have a new Harbor Freight welder on the way. So maybe I'll go ahead and do some tailpipe work in the summertime. This is the backup camera. I did a video all about that, all about my backup camera. And the reason why I bought that backup camera was because when I had my topper at nighttime, it was super hard to back up. So that's the reason why I bought it. I went ahead and put the monitor away so I don't use the backup camera no more because now I can see with the window open. <laughs> Or with the camper off eventually i'll go ahead and move that out all this is i just have to unbolt this and then plug it from the splice that i did to the tail lights so nothing crazy toolbox is really nice this toolbox is uh, held by the j hooks i'll go ahead and do another video one day of showing you guys what i carry in my toolbox and stuff like that mostly all off-road and, and spirit parts and stuff this idler arm is called total chaos it's made by total chaos it's a way more heavier duty way more beefier runs about 400 bucks brand new and uh this one here was off of eric's truck again black yoda and then when he did his sass when you do sass you don't need this anymore so Eric sold it to me for a good price, so I decided to buy it. So, I highly recommend people get that. If you're going to keep your truck IFS and you want to go bigger tires like 33s, 35s, the idler arm is one of the weakest points. So many people break that on the trail. So, make sure you carry spare idler arms or make sure you go ahead and just bite the bullet and upgrade it to the Total Chaos. Because these guys are super awesome. Um, the bearings inside of the Chaos arm is uh, also rebuildable. So, easy to do. Let's go ahead and pop the interior. Not that much inside nowadays. But I want to just show you guys the inside because like I said, I want to make this video so one day I can go back and watch it. So watch my pretty truck, my beautiful truck. Haven't done too much to it. I need to clean my floor mats. But like I said, it's still winning right now so everything's going to get dirty. This glove box is starting to break so I'm going to go ahead and replace it soon. And again, I have all the interior parts that I need from Rusty Red. If you guys don't know who Rusty Red is, Rusty Red was a 92 SR5 pickup truck that I got and I was parting it out. The $50 truck that we got. I'm going to replace the glove box. i uh, replace this right here. The previous owner that I bought it from, he said that this was caused because somebody broke into the vehicle and they were trying to steal the radio and they didn't have very successful on it. So I'm going to replace this whole piece. This whole piece here is one unit and it also has the tray right here. So you can see right now they're just using a piece of cardboard and this plastic piece is broken. So I have all that available right now. It's easier to do it in the summertime. So we're going to replace that. And it's all the same color, gray. It is a 5-speed truck. I forgot to mention that 5-speed transmission. So if you guys 
guys don't remember a couple years ago I had a 93 Toyota pickup I had the same truck just like this just not the sunroof and stuff but I had it just like this SR um, SR5 no it wasn't SR, it was just a regular del deluxe cab <laughs> so I had a truck just like this it was 3.0 and it was an automatic transmission with 488 gearings factory and man even with 33s on 35s on it it still had no power so for me, in my opinion, if you guys are, are going to go and buy a 3.0 V6 pickup truck or 4Runner, try to find one that's manual transmission, guys. Manual transmission makes such a big, big difference. So if you guys are buying a 3.0, they're great motors. They're not the best, but they're good motors. But you can definitely find one in 5-speed manual, 5 seats transmission. They are really, really awesome. We have the fender bender. This is a little parking lot fender bender where the white Tundra hit me. We'll go ahead and talk about that in a bit. As of this filming here, we have... As of this filming, we have 238,916 miles. That's nothing, guys. Nothing. Nothing compared to my other trucks. These seat covers, when I bought it, when I bought this vehicle, it came with the vehicle. They're really nice. They're uh, they're not real leather. They're just fake leather. They fit really well, but they're starting to rip because of me. You know, this is all from me. So they're starting to rip. So I'll go ahead and start finding myself some new seat covers. If you guys have the same truck like me, let me know if you guys have any recommendation. And then this is just my back of it. I got a lot of junk, a lot of winter stuff. Always carry a blanket with you, especially you guys live in Alaska. You never know when you might have to sleep the night or break down. Have a blanket with you. Keep yourself warm. We have right over here, toilet paper. This is just a little modification right here. Uh, bungee core, toilet paper, paper towel. This is one of the best modification I did. Accessory right here. This is a little, ex uh, this is a oversized mirror. It just clips onto your rear, your original mirror, and you can see so much with this one. So I highly recommend you guys get that. This mirror actually came off of the white Chevy 1500 that I got last year, and then I took that off before I sold it. I have this little suction cup right here. This mount here is to mount this camera that we're watching this video from, so I can mount this camera or anything that's a quarter inch. I got my GoPro Hero 7, the black one. I do a lot of filming on that, my time lapse videos on that. This is a uh, phone holder from Best Buy. I forgot what the brand is, but it's really nice. It's like the iTouch 5 or something like that. Really nice. You can just put your phone on here and then it snaps into place. And then I have my phone charger and then a USB C. This is to power the GoPro. So the GoPro, um, it never runs out of battery as long as this is plugged into it. I can record as long as I want until the memory card is full. So the memory card is like a 64 gig. And then this is the LED control. <laughs> this is just um, this is just adhesive right now. So on, off. And what else I have? That's pretty much it right here. Go ahead and pop the engine and then we'll talk about the engine bay. This is the 3.0 V6 infamous for a head gasket and whatnot. I've owned two trucks with 3.0 so they're not bad. I like it. Once you get used to it, they're nice. So like I said earlier, it's completely stock. Like I said, I done a, I just got done doing a overhaul on the timing belt, so you can see right here, a new ASIN timing belt was installed on Fe February third, two thousand twenty one at two hundred thirty eight thousand six hundred sixty four miles. We have new, new timing belt, um, new idler bearing, new tensioner bearing, new water pump, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And also a new front uh, main seal, the crankshaft main seal. <laughs> A new seal for that so it won't leak oil this engine is leak free right now there's absolutely no leaks besides leak from the windshield fluid has a little leak on the rub on the pump and then the valve covers i did the new uh new new valve cover seals gasket uh last summer but now they're starting to leak a little bit so i'll probably go and redo them again this summer so let's talk about this engine. What have I done? Uh, first thing I've done is the EGR delete. I highly, highly recommend you guys do the EGR delete, especially on this engine. It will make it so much easier to work on because you get rid of so much stuff. So make sure you do that delete, and I have a video on that too. But make sure you are make sure you're the state that you're living in is uh, make sure it's legal because it won't. If you do it, it won't pass mod. So new spark plug wires new spark plugs air filter this red thing here is called an oil catch can and it's really simple so it comes out from the pcv valve and usually this right here will go right into the intake so instead of that it goes here 
and it drops all the nasty oil or anything that catches it and then the air system will go back into here so all this is really it sounds fancy oil catch can all this is just a oil filter another oil filter for the PC valve this is for the breather when you're you know your cylinder wants to bleed and all the air goes back into your intake and gets burned but sometimes it also picks up some oil and some stuff so that's the purpose of that a lot of people that run turbos you have to run this people were complaining about me doing this install <laughs> they're like you don't have turbo why do you need that I'm like you don't need to have turbo you can do whatever you want <sighs> that's the beauty of automotive you can do whatever you want man you don't have to do what the the, the norm is doing EGR delete oil catch can new time the overall new spark plug wires new everything I also did remove the ADD system for the four-wheel drive all that stuff is like right here so when I have delete that and again everything that I'm talking about right now I have video on my channel that goes more into detail on it and the other thing I want to replace in the summer I has already bought it I bought some new tubing this is one of the coolant tubing right here you can see right here it's starting to crack a little bit so I have a feeling that it's gonna fail anytime soon so I always carry this tube with me in my truck spare I got a foot of that and um, that's the coolant that goes in that, that, that coolant is a pipe that goes from there to the uh, throttle body I believe so I just need to go ahead and replace that but I don't want to mess with that already there's another one that goes right here on the back side and that one actually leaked right here this one here that's one this one is actually uh the like say last couple months ago this one actually started leaking because it was so bad and cracking so this is actually a brand new one so i replaced that already because it was mandatory but this one here i can see that it's starting to crack soon so for now since it's not cracking we're gonna we're not gonna replace it but summertime comes we're definitely gonna go ahead and replace that because you don't want your coolant to be blasting you might you might get scared that it's a freaking head gas new distributor rotor new cap new everything I also install new master cylinder master clutch slay cylinder i highly recommend you stick with asin for all these parts your slay cylinder your master cylinder stick with asin and then i don't run a fan shroud when i bought this truck it didn't have a fan shroud a lot of people say that oh you need a fan shroud da, da, da. but you know if you break your fan shroud it's totally fine you guys can run this without fan shroud guys i've been driving this truck for over ten thousand plus miles already since i own it and guess what absolutely no problem a lot of people also recommend you go and switch the fan out to the other fan, the one that doesn't have all the connectors. Because this one here, once it's snapped, it's all one piece, so it will snap everything. But right now, I'm not too worried. I'm just going to run this for now. I also have Rusty Red, Rusty Red's fan too, so I got a few backup fans, so no worries. So other than that, guys, that's just my beautiful truck here. My 93 Toyota SR5. I love this truck, man. I don't know if I want to sell it. Oh, and then also speaking of the uh, fender bender. So this fender bender here happened a month ago or so. I was getting some water at the store and then White Tundra was backing up, reversing. I guess he's a big truck, so he didn't see it. He backed it to me. And uh, we have finally came to a conclusion. The <coughs> um, His insurance took liability and they gave me a quote of what it's going to cost. And they wrote me a check. That's about it. It really sucks that it hit. It, it got hit, but man, because this truck was really, really mint. Now it was really minty. Now it's mint. So it's all good. It's still a really beautiful truck. I'm not too worried about it. I always carry a shovel, and I actually need to go ahead and fill up my windshield bottle because it's, like I said, it was it's uh it's leaking now. It has a slow leak, so. I'll fill it whenever. Right now, I don't really need to use any windshield fluid. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for my truck here. I don't have too much to show you guys. The bottom of it right there. And uh, let me show you guys how clean this truck is, man. Let me show you how clean the rust is. This is rust free, man. All rust free. Beautiful, beautiful truck. Rust free truck. Very nice, man. Beautiful 93 SR5. I'm going to show you guys the back of it. Beautiful. All that brown spot that you guys see is just dirt and stuff. So in the summertime, I'll go ahead and pressure wash everything. I like to go ahead and pressure wash it. And then I like to also uh, to spray some spray paint liner, some spray paint bed liner. 
I like to keep my frame painted and rust free so very very beautiful I also uh, this this rear bumper I also got in during the winter time so I put a few spray paint coats only but then and the weather is already getting it the weather is getting to it already and you can see the paints coming off already so there's a bit of rust already or there's a redis there's a little bit of surface rust so in the summertime I'll go ahead and sand that down and repaint it again but anyways guys this is a long video I know and again this video is not too uh, this video is more of a personal video I want to film this video just because one day like I said I might I might no longer not, I might not have this truck no more who knows like I say who, you never know what's gonna happen but this is one of those videos that I want to make in case I can come back and watch it in the future <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video I hope you guys enjoy it hope you guys learned something if you guys are Toyota lovers if you guys are looking to buy this truck if you guys if you guys are looking to get into the Toyota game or something like that, hopefully this video gives you guys an inside look on what to expect and enjoy. You guys can follow me on my Instagram, 90 new underscore 4x4, where I post more content of off-road Toyota related pro uh, content. So I'll catch you guys there and thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time.